Hi guys, it's Surya and today is Monday. So today we're going to be learning how to solve the gear shift, also known as the gear cube 2x2 and a bunch of other names. So let's just learn how to do that in brief. I posted a detailed tutorial on that last week. So if you don't know how to solve this at all, I recommend you watch that first. So let's go. As usual, before we get into how to solve this, let's just see how it works. So at first this seems really intimidating. I mean, you try to rotate it, but nothing happens. And then this happens, it seems to rotate like this. I mean, if you play with it enough, you'll see that you're supposed to rotate it in this way, like this. You're supposed to hold two opposite things like this and rotate it. And then, I mean, at this point, many are already intimidated, saying that, you know, it's rotating in such a complicated way. But others may notice that, you know, well, this is a continuous process, right? To jumble it, you just have to keep rotating. So to solve it, you must also keep rotating. So you can just rotate until it gets solved. Well, that's where this cube has a hidden trick up its sleeve. You can actually split the cube open like this, rotate just four of the pieces, bring them out of sync like this, push it back in. Now all of a sudden, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you just rotate this, you can't solve it. You have to push, you have to pull this open, align it, and then push it back in. So, I mean, as if that wasn't enough, you can jumble this up, you can go here, you can pull this open, you can jumble this, you can pull that open, jumble that, move the whole thing like that. You can just do all sorts of complicated stuff, basically. And now you may be wondering, okay, well, I can just pull out all three, I mean, all three faces, and I can just align each one. But, well, this doesn't allow that. You can only pull one at a time. The only exception is the unsolvable case, which I will explain in the end. So anyway, now that we've seen how this works, let's get into how to solve it. So now first we need to solve one layer, like one side entirely. So for that, I just pick a color that just really stands out. So it's easy to spot and solve. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick yellow, but you can do whatever you want. So first thing, let's align two of the pieces, two adjacent pieces, one big gear and one small gear. So this isn't difficult at all. We just split the cube like this, align them like this, and bring them back in. Note that even these two have to be the same color because, well, this wouldn't count as aligned because as you can see, these two colors don't match. This is the yellow side because these four are all yellow. So the yellow can only be formed here. So this is not matched. This is wrong. So it's got to be here. So orient it in a way that this side matches as well. So now that we've done that, we can just split this cube this way. Just pull it open. Make sure you hear the two notches, not just one. Sometimes it can get stuck after just one. So just make sure that doesn't happen. So here, these two adjacent ones have been solved. Just pull out this face like this, so these two are safe. Now all you need to do is just keep rotating this until these two get solved. Watch out for the mistake one can make. Uh, that I mentioned earlier, these two being solved, but over there, that doesn't count as solved. Just make sure you don't do that here. Make sure the yellows are aligned and that here. So now for that, you just need to keep rotating it. So let's do that. This, there you go, not aligned. There you go, it's aligned. Sometimes it can take more, but in this case, it was just a coincidence. So as you can see, this whole layer has been solved. Now that we're done with that, let's get, when, get to solving the last layer. So the first thing we're going to do in the last layer, just pull this open to split the first and last layer. Now just keep rotating this until you find two adjacent matching pieces. So just keep doing that. Just do it very slowly. Okay, note that this does not count because as you can see, it doesn't match here. Let's do it slowly. Oh, did, was that a match? No. Was that a match? No. Just be careful. There you go. Nope, not a match. There you go. This one matched. Oh, it's just, just a coincidence, but these three matched. But, I mean, sometimes you can get a situation where two match, all four match, stuff like that. But anyway, we found two that match. Let's get in the last step, which would be aligning the misaligned cogs. So, as I mentioned before, you can get different, different situations. Here, I've just gone to, like, the worst situation you can possibly get where one big cog is misaligned and so is the small cog. Make sure they're both adjacent to each other and not, you know, far away. So anyway, now that we have this, let's first start with the small cog. Always do that. So here's what you need to do. Whether it's big cog or the small cog, place it at your bottom right, right there. Okay. And now just take a look. How many steps does it need to go to be solved? So you can just take this. This needs to go one, two. So it's two steps clockwise. Right? 
you can always check with a different cog because you know this is interlined so you may say it's a bit unfair to look at it from here you may get confused you may say oh, it needs to go to there just take a look at this one two that's two steps clockwise so here's what you do now it can be two it can be one it can be like oh that's the max it can either go from there to there or there to there if it goes till there then it starts needing to go this way so well yeah you can either get one or two but either way the solution is the same so here's what you do you first pull the front out like this just grab the front and pull it out now you rotate this in the direction that it needs to move such that this moves two times this needs to move two steps that's why this needs to move two revolutions if this needed to go only once then just one revolution but yeah just rotate this such that this moves two two rounds let's go that's one that's two now push it back in pull out the right side like this do the same thing again this needs to move exactly two rounds do the exact same thing it needs to move clockwise so rotate this clockwise it's one and that's two there you go now all you need to do pull out this top layer here this one and just keep rotating this until it gets solved no. and there you go it's been solved so now that we've done this, let's get into the final step, which is the big cog. Now, the solution for the big cog is very similar to that of the small cog, but with one small change. Now, here's what you need to do if it mo needs to move two times or four times, clockwise or anti-clockwise, that doesn't matter. So two times or four times. If it needs to move one or three, that's actually an unsolvable situation. I'll explain that in a second. So anyway, let's name, we, now let's just see how many times this needs to move. Okay, this needs to move one, two. That's two steps anti-clockwise. So here's what we do. We keep it on the bottom right again. Now we need to rotate this such that this moves two rounds, right? Well, no. You need to actually divide that number by two. So this needs to move two steps. Therefore, we need to rotate this such that this moves only one, half of the number. So if this needed to move four steps, then that number would only be two. So anyway, let's pull this front out. Now we need to rotate this in the direction it needs to go. That's it. This moves only one round. So there you go. Just one. That's it. Push it back in. Pull out the right side. Same as before. Again, one round only. There you go. Now just pull out the top like this. Just keep rotating until it gets solved. Oh, there you go. That's a coincidence. And there you go. It's been solved. Now if you ever get a situation where... This just needs to move one step. Let's get into that. One step or three steps, by the way. So here, this cog here needs to move just one step anti-clockwise. So even if it's three steps, if this situation is actually unsolvable. It means that there's a really, really hard, to, uh, hard algorithm for this. It's really not worth it. So at this point, you can either jumble this up and start over or you can try to cheat a little bit. I mean, you're, I mean, this is technically a morality thing. You're not supposed to do this all the time. You're only supposed to do this in this situation. So here's what you do. You pull this out, but just a little bit. You're not supposed to hear that click. Just pull it out very carefully. It can take a lot of time. Well, not that much, actually. Just pull it out a little bit. Ah. And there you go. Just still there. And now turn the cube very carefully. Pull out that as well. At that point, we've managed to pull two sides, like this. Now, as you can see, these two are, are like separated from the rest. You can just twist this into place. Oh wait, these two are separated. Yeah, so just twist this one into place. It doesn't matter if that gets messed up. You can always solve the small cog. Just use the small cog to rotate it if you want. And there you go. Now push it back in. It's been solved. Sometimes this gets jumbled. You can just solve that on your own. So let's do that. Let's move anti-clockwise one step. So, this just needs to move one round, there you go, and rotate this one round, there you go, and just keep rotating this, and 
And there you go. So congratulations, you've solved the gear shift. Hope you enjoyed this.